Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a drive in a racing game in Unity and welcome to episode 10. So before we start anything in this uh, episode, one thing that's been brought to my attention uh, in a recent live stream is the idea of this cube being the tracker and it's just a red dot on the track. Well, if we untick mesh renderer, we can get rid of it completely. The only reason I was keeping it around for now is just because it gives us a visualization of where the marker is and the fact that it is moving so the script works correctly. So you just need to untick mesh renderer to get rid of that. So this episode, we're going to add in a bit more of environment. We're going to look at wind zones and we're going to have a look at a little bit more UI and adding lap counts to our game. So let's start by adding in some more of this nice shrubbery that we've got going on. So in our objects folder, I'm going to drag and drop this bush. And you'll see as we get further into this episode, the impacts of something uh, called the wind zone. And it can have an effect on many things which are attached to the terrain, but not everything. So if we click on the terrain itself, and we want to add in these trees here. And if you remember, we've already added these two, so the green one and the kind of orangey brown one. So let's add in another one. So edit trees, add. Now, although this isn't a tree, we still add it as a tree because the prefab itself can fit into there. So it is a bush in this case, and it works the same way as everything else. We just need to change maybe the brush size, uh, change the height, density, to decrease a little bit, and we can place it here. And you can see the bush is kind of forming already. So you can take your time and do this as you need to. Nothing too strenuous. It's all about just, again, the idea of having some uh, environmental design going on. So I'm gonna cover all this area here with these little bushes, but I'm not gonna go over the top with it. Just a couple here and there. You can change it as you need to. So at the moment when we press play, the everything in it is kind of motionless. There's, there's nothing to it. We can give it the idea of swaying in the wind by adding a wind zone. And a wind zone is classed as a 3D object. So if we go to game object, 3D object, and go to wind zone, it'll place it, well, it's placed it right here on the edge. It shouldn't matter too much if you're gonna have it as directional, which I'll explain in just a second. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it more towards the track itself. And you can see if you move, you can see the bristling trees already having an effect in the scene view. So I'm going to have it about there. And by default, it's pretty decent. It should do the trick. You can see the motion already. The shadows also accurately reflect it. So let's stop that there. And let's change our main to be quite higher. And you can see it'll have a much higher impact. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is just quickly turn down the music on this. I feel it's a little bit loud, especially for me at the moment. So I'm going to decrease it to about there. And we should be able to see, because we've increased the main wind in the window, we can see it's having a big impact here. And we can actually change this real time. So we can go to our window while it's playing and we can change different things. But we don't really need to because in all fairness, changing things in the scene view still works just as well rather than being in the game. And you can change the turbulence and obviously the higher that is, the more violent it's going to be. So you can see it does look a little bit ridiculous. So don't go overboard with your turbulence and main values. I feel decent values to have are probably one and one, at least for starters, because it gives a sense of there's a little breeze in the air. Pulse magnitude, pulse frequency, obviously it pulses so you'll get kind of like whooshes, surges in the wind as it were. I generally don't bother with these too much as the decency of the value is, it's, it's pretty decent to see it, so you don't need to worry about them too much. The only thing you may need to worry about is just changing the mode to spherical. Spherical adds an extra option called radius, and this works in the same way as what a light would do. So you can increase this and it would have a much wider impact. So if we leave the default as 20 and press play, we'll see not a lot actually affects it. But if we change this in game, we can see the wider the sphere, it's having more of an impact over here. And in the scene view, you can also see that by watching this blue line surrounding the sphere. So the radius is going to about there. 
So it'll affect pretty much everything within this radius here, but it won't affect anything over here. I would leave it as directional in all fairness, because it will affect everything going, well, in this direction at least. So when we press play, you'll see that has the impact all the way around the track. So if I go backwards, for example, and just turn around, you can see although the wind zone is over there, it's still affecting these trees and these bushes here. The only other thing it, the wind zone won't have an impact on when it comes to objects on the terrain is the grass which we put here, which is the paint details. We're not going to do that in this episode. That would be something for another little chunk of environmental design. Um, obviously not all terrains have grass, not all terrains have trees. It just depends what you're building. So just be conscious of what you're putting in the trees and the paint details. So now we've got a little bit more environment going, it seems a little bit more realistic. Eventually we'll, in fact probably next episode, we'll have a look at uh, Skybox. I think we need to get a bit of a Skybox in. Um, we'll do that next time. Um, so for now what we'll do is let's get some UI in and count our laps. It's real simple and what I intend to do is move on to lap limits and objectives. So let's set up our UI. Let's go to our canvas and let's double click on our panel. Now we've got this panel over here, which is our lap time. Let's have a duplicate panel over the other side, which has our laps. So hold control, press D on the panel. And let's use this little tool over here to move it over to the other side. Do about there. That seems to match quite nicely. And don't forget to change the anchor point over to the left side and not the right, because the reason we have to change the anchor point is when we start the game up, it may kind of get a little bit confused and try and bring it right a bit rather than keep it left. Having it anchored left means it'll always appear in this corner. So let's go into this panel. Let's right click, rename, and let's just call it a lap panel. And let me see, what can we get rid of? I think I'm going to get rid of everything here. So we just got what currently says lap time. Let's put this as laps. And I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. And I think I'll increase the font size. Let's have it as 30 in this one. So we need to just bring that to there. And let's put a colon on there as well. And let's have this min display also as 30. And let's have it set as zero and let's increase the size. There we go. Let's bring it a little bit closer to home. There we go. And let's right click, rename, and it's not min display anymore, is it? It's lap count. So to change the amount of laps that we do, it should be pretty simple for us. We just need to go down to our lap complete trigger down here. And if you remember, that is as soon as we cross the finish line after we've been halfway round. And on it, we have the lap complete trigger. So let's go into this script. So in Monodevelop or Visual Studio, what we'll need to do is we need to add in another variable. So public game object and let's just call it lap counter semicolon so by default it is zero so underneath here where we've got lap time manager dot millicount equals zero we just need to put um, lap counter dot get component in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals double quote plus and now what we need to do is create another variable which will actually be how many laps we've done so underneath there our lap counter we need to do public we'll do int because it's only ever going to be whole number we don't need to use a float in this case so public int laps done semicolon so here we'd have lap counter plus get, uh, get component text is equal to the double quote because it needs to be uh, a string. Obviously, we already know that. We've already established that. And then we need to put plus 
laps done semicolon so as it stands right now what's happening is it's always going to display zero because we're not adding anything on so what we need to do is the instant we pass through that trigger we need to add one to laps done so laps done plus equals one semicolon so by the time it gets down here it will display one so save that script and we just need to add in that lap time uh, lap counter component which is <clears throat> uh, this one lap count so i'm going to save that project there and let's press play and hopefully we should be able to see this increase as we get around the first lap and you can already see the uh, disappearance of that red box which is our tracker but rest assured the ai is following us no problem at all uh, also in a most recent live stream i added an extra marker as you can see here just so as the ai doesn't have much of a problem following the track so there we go we've done laps one so that'll just keep increasing as you go around more and more and more it's nothing too drastic and we should see it hopefully get to two Okay, so what uh, we're going to move on to pretty soon is as we cross that finish line, we maybe want a little buzzing noise, just maybe a dinging noise to say we've got through our lap. Um, we also want to maybe have on the UI, if we go up here, so it says laps zero, we'll end up, next episode at least, we'll end up having like a stroke here or a slash and have maybe three there. So we have to complete three laps to finish the race. So the last thing I think I'm going to do is kind of shrink this. In fact, I've noticed that the lap count and the lap label aren't correct. So the lap count needs to be um, set top right. So hopefully when we close this now, we shouldn't have a problem. So we just need to come off that and bring it upwards. So there we go, laps zero. So now it looks a little bit more neater when we press play. So you can work with the UI yourselves. You don't need to worry about it too much. Um, so yeah, next episode, we'll do lap limits and objectives. So three laps to finish, for example. Uh, we'll create a script to ensure that our best lap isn't overwritten every time we cross the finish line, because at present it is. It's just, it's not too complicated to create, but we'll put that in. We'll also look at putting a skybox in so we're not stuck with this plain blue sky. We'll put something kind of funky in there, something really nice to give, to kind of complement our track system at least, to make it look more like a game rather than just plain sky. So yeah, I'll leave it to you guys now to create your own UI, how, figure out how many laps you want. And guys, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.